It's general conference time for the members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For many of us at the intersection of LGBTQ Avenue and LDS Street, this time of the year, conference time, this weekend in particular, can be painful and shaming. As a marginalized group, general conference weekend often adds to that layer of marginalization. The talks too often produce a polarizing discussion, a polarizing atmosphere that is intrinsic to our realities. That marginalization and pain is not the message I want to share today. I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you what I know to be true, the things that I have learned as truths in my life. I also wanted to share a few things of faith and hope also. October is LGBTQ History Month. The 11th of October is also National Coming Out Day. It's a day to celebrate and honor the authentic and open journeys of queer people in our community. I invite you to lean into these stories. I invite you to hear them and to listen to them. And if you're closeted, I invite you to come out. Get to know other people who are like you. Get to know others who are not like you. Listen to and better understand the experiences that are not just your own. The coming out experience is both painful and rewarding. It can also be freeing and confining. It is often scary and exhilarating, both at the same time. So let's talk a second about coming out and the importance of that experience. It has been widely believed that we must come out because it's our responsibility or some form of requirement to inform the straight community that we're not straight. As if it's the queer person's responsibility to make sure other people are okay that we exist. For many in the straight community, they feel that it's the LGBTQ person's responsibility or duty to come out to them, to receive their approval for who and what they are. Today, I want to better clarify the importance of coming out and the importance of changing our mindset so that we can take away so much fear that surrounds this experience and replace that fear with power and authority. You are not required to come out to make straight people comfortable. Instead, the coming out experience is yours. It is your opportunity to invite people into your life. It is your invitation to your friends and to your family members to allow them the chance to get to know you better, to find out more about you. By offering that invitation and extending that invitation to them, they can choose to accept or reject it, but you hold the power in this experience. The burden shouldn't be on you to convince or to even persuade someone to accept who you are. You are who you are, regardless of whether or not someone approves of it. You are who you are, regardless of whether or not a straight person feels comfortable with you. I'm extending this coming out invitation to Latter-day leaders as well. For far too long, you have tried to control this subject. For far too long, as Latter-day leaders, you have promoted a narrative that says, people like me are void of the spirit, that we are unhappy, that my love is counterfeit. You have called me a contagion, a malady, a problem, a degenerate, a disease. And even just a few weeks ago, you labeled me and people who support me ticking time bombs and even commandeers. These descriptors and your understanding of my experience and the experience of my friends are just not true. They are far more than the destruct we are far more than the destructive and hurtful things you have said and continue to teach about us. We invite you 
members of the church, church leaders included, to follow President Ballard's recent message from the BYU pulpit. He said, we need to listen to and understand what our LGBTQ brothers and sisters are feeling and experiencing. Certainly, he continued, we must do better than we have done in the past so that all members feel they have a spiritual home where their brothers and sisters love them and where they have a place to worship and serve the Lord. We must do better than we're doing in this space. President Ballard would not have said we must do better if you were doing already enough. We must do better. We must better understand this community. For far too long, we have relied on Mormonism to validate our queer experiences and to approve of our realities. That course has been deathly slow. It's been too methodical, and it's produced few progressive steps in the correct direction. We are far from being healthy and strong in this space as a church. We can no longer wait for the church to change. Waiting is hurting people. It is dangerous. It is harmful. It is deadly. For some, the progress and acceptance they needed from their faith community never came, and they are no longer with us today. We are disabling and restricting growth and the happiness of real people by waiting for a religion and for religious communities to accept us. We no longer have to wait. We cannot continue to wait for you. We do not need church leaders to administer our happiness or validate our realities. We simply don't. That is not your position as a church leader. I have come to learn that religion often functions best when there is a boogeyman. Religion thrives in a space where there is something to fear and something that only they can solve for you. For too long, religious leaders have worked tirelessly to convince you that it was only them who knew what you needed as a queer person. It was only them who could translate the Word of God. They discounted your your personal revelations, and they silenced the still, small voices that testified to you. Their experience and their revelation, particular to this space, is limited. They aren't LGBTQ. They simply just don't understand with complete empathy what it's like to be gay. The church has a difficult history with its treatment and administration to queer people in this space. They have exiled and excommunicated us. They have electrocuted and poisoned us, all in an effort to make us straight. They have dismissed and deleted our experiences. And they have yet to apologize for that history. Instead, they hide or they distance themselves from it. We need transparency. We need to heal. We need the church to apologize, correct the record, and come to a unity of understanding in this space. I want the LGBTQ community and your family and friends to know that I am on your side. You know who you are. You know your worth. I know that you are divine. You know that you are good. I want you to know that you are not broken. You are not the negative things your family of faith tried to persuade you to believe. You are not alone. There are communities of people who do have complete empathy and compassion and love for you. We're looking for you. We want you. We need you. Come out. Come out and invite your family and your friends and your faith leaders to get to know you better. Offer that invitation to them and allow them to arrive at your doorstep. 
This is your opportunity to reclaim your story. This is your power. You hold it. This is your time to live in the fullest measure of your creation. Now, there have been times that I have been asked, how can I keep my covenants with God, be a good person in His eyes, and still enter into a same-gender relationship or honor my intrinsic identity or gender expression? Those are really great questions. And they are questions that do not come without much, much contemplation and introspection. Over the years, I've listened to countless stories like yours. I've listened as transgender people share their stories of transition. They often recall a life of dissonance and pain, confusion and contradiction. In contrast, for so, so many, they've also come to realize joy and happiness. They are able to align their spirits and their bodies into a force of completeness and wholeness. I listen to stories of depression and suicidality, of family and faith, of ostracization and isolation. I witness stories of excommunication, all done in the name of love. In all of this pain and growth, I want you to know that I didn't sacrifice my morals or values to honor who and what I am. It was not a requirement of God for me to deviate from who He intended me to be. He did not create an, an unobtainable labyrinth or maze for me to navigate, never to make it to the end, never to find joy, never to find happiness. That isn't what this life is about. Instead, I learned that I already had all those things inside of me. They were there the whole time. I just had to find them and embrace them. Again, I want you to know that you will never need to sacrifice your values or your morals to find honesty in this experience. Never. If you're watching or listening to this and you do not identify as LGBTQ, I offer you the same advice. Accepting the invitation to get to know the LGBTQ community better will not cause you to sacrifice your values or your morals. It simply doesn't work that way. I promise you that if you embark on this journey, you can come to know what I know. And I know that I am not a mistake, and neither are my friends. I know that there have been decades and decades of misinformation in this space. We can do better. We can do so much better than we're doing now. I know of the polarizing discussions that take place in this arena. I see them every day. I know that the messages that come from policy and from pulpits they do not match the lived experiences that we find at our own kitchen tables. When it comes to gender expression and identity or sexual orientation, we're not talking about policy. We're talking about people. We are talking about sons and daughters, children, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, siblings. Too often, we lose the human element in this discussion. The inability to honor the first and second great commandments. We can do better. This weekend, and next week, and next month, and even next year, I invite you to lean into the messages that promote the human experience. Messages that highlight the worth of the individual. Experiences that magnify and, and lift, not marginalize and excommunicate. That is religion in action. That is a world that invites Zion. I invite you to double your efforts in listening to the experiences of the LGBTQ community. Hear them. 
I invite you to withhold your prejudice and even suspend your traditional beliefs, if even just for a few moments. Allow yourself the opportunity to hear without speaking and to listen without preconceiving. Latter-day Saints all over the world will gather as families to listen to their church leaders share a general message to the body of believers. After those messages have been shared, and when you retire to your individual living spaces or sit at your kitchen tables, you're going to be able to look at your LGBTQ family members in a way different than is often portrayed from that pulpit. You will see your gay kids in their wholeness. You will see your transgender child as a gift. You will see them not as gay or transgender, but as people, people with a name, with needs, with hopes, and with aspirations. You will see this community for their spirituality, for their divine connections, for their talents, for their love, and also for their pain. This weekend, I invite you to focus on the person, not on the policy. We can do better. All of us can. But we can do it better when we do it together. This general conference weekend, I want to make an invitation to you to see the LGBTQ people as their heavenly parents see them. I invite you to see them as their affirming friends and family members see them. See them, even if they don't see themselves. I promise you will not need to sacrifice your values or your morals to do that. Now go and accept this invitation to grow. <laughs>